All right, guys, we got our 7.3 block back from the machine shop. Uh, I'm going to knock uh, cam bearings out of it now. I got new cam bearings. Uh, I'll show you my cam bearing installer here. Basically, it just uh, comes with various sizes. You'll you'll pick uh, you'll pick the size that fits your cam bearing, and this will go inside of your cam bearing. Uh, this will go inside your cam bearing installer and remover. And you want to line up these. Hard to hold this. In. Line up these uh, splits here with the splits in this. You'll tighten this down, this will expand this, and it'll expand all this to fit the cam bearing tight. But uh, to get all that in there, you can, this will come with a long, you can screw this rod onto this one. I've done some, I uh, just did an N14 here, I don't know, two or three months ago, I put cam bearings and a new cam in it, and it did that N14 coming, so uh, it'll do truck engines, it'll do tractor engines, or pickups, or cast cars. I mean, 150 bucks at Summit Racing. I mean, it's, you can't beat that. So I had an engine that uh, I sent to a machine shop out of a 3126 cat motor uh, and I, I didn't have this tool and the machine shop put the cam bearings in and uh, I didn't check them and when I rebuilt the engine put it all back together it uh, it starved the rockers that the, there's two holes in a 3126 cat motor that feed the one feeds the cam bearing and one hole feeds the rockers and everything on the top end of the motor. And we fired it up and ran it and it ran good and lasted about five hours. And I had to buy about $6,000 worth of rockers and I had to buy cam. And so ever since then I put my own cam bearings in. I'll, I'll never, they, they, they didn't line the oil holes up. They had them 180 degrees out. I don't even know how they could do that. But the feed hole, you know, from the oil gallery, it wasn't lined up. So, uh, really important, line those up when you put them in. But uh, I'll get set up here and I'll show you guys how to remove these and, and uh, put them in. Okay guys, so when you're putting these in, so this gallery here feeds your main bearings. It also feeds the hole that feeds the cam bearings right on the other side here too. It feeds, it's the same gallery. So, what I did, if you look down, you can line up your your cam bearing holes with these and then once you put it in just sometimes you might have to take your cam bearing installer out two or three times to make sure your depth is right to make sure you're lined up and you can also look down this hole with the flashlight and see if you're lined up it, it is critical to have those holes lined up the, the cam bearing hole itself is a little bit bigger than the oil gallery hole so there's a little bit of forgiveness there about a half
hurt to check it three times. I mean, just make sure it's right. Remember the front bearing, the front bearing is wider than the back bearing. Hand bearing. Okay, here's where you put the oddball in, the wide one at the front. And this, these cam bearings got these little notches. To be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what they're for. I don't know if they're directional marches, uh, direct, directional marks as to which way the bearings go in. I think that's what they are, so you know what side to put them in from, what side's the front. But I just took them, I just paid attention to what the way they came out, and that's the way they were when they came out. This was, this notch was at the front. I'm pretty sure that's what it's for because the hole, the oil hole is offset in the bearing. It's not centered in it, so that's exactly what it's for. That notch is to tell you that that's at the front. I suck left-handed. Just a touch more. Okay, all cam bearings are removed and installed. Let's uh, turn over to check our work. Well, they look good. All the feed holes are lined up. These are the holes I was telling you you could look down and see if your holes are lined up. But uh, we've got all our cam burns in now. It's time to, we're gonna put our, uh, put our lifters in, put our, uh, our, our uh, then we'll put our cam in, and then we'll start putting our, uh, actually we'll put our, we'll put our, uh, piston coolant nozzles in, torque those down, and then um, we can put lifters and all that stuff in too. And then we'll have to start putting our cam in and and put our crank in there. So, all right guys, so uh, I'll be back. I'm gonna put a cam in one of these seven threes. You don't need to heat this. Uh, if you get a, I know it, it, these are about, I think I paid, I can't remember, 150, 175 bucks. This is the big posi lock puller. It works. I mean, it's an awesome tool, but just gets you a posi lock puller, and you can press them off too. The press seems like they want to break the gear half the time. It doesn't want to. I mean, you got to really make sure in the press you're on that square, and you're not hitting your thrust plate on your cam. But uh, I'll just show you here. All right. Cam gears off. So now, gonna take the gear, put the gear in the oven at 500 degrees for 30 minutes, and then I'll uh, make sure my other cam's got a key in it, and then slide the, the gear onto the, uh, the new cam, let it cool down, and you should be fine. I was 
reading one of the power stroke forums and I heard some guy talking about uh, welding the gear onto the camshaft and I'm just word of caution do not do that that's got to be one of the stupidest things I ever heard I mean uh, your camshafts are very very hard material and so is your gears when you weld on that you're going to crystallize that any kind of shock load on that cam or that camshaft the cam gear or the camshaft shit's going to break don't weld your cam gear to your camshaft so uh, I'm going to get this thing in the oven and uh, then we're going to press her back on here so I'll show you when we get her ready I'm in to the back on. kitchen of the shop here and we've got our gear cam gear in the oven this oven only goes to 450 so if you got one that will go to 450 put it in there for about a half an hour and then let the timer go off get your key and the end of your camshaft make sure your thrust plates on there get you a rubber mallet a dead blow with some sand in it, don't, not just one of those rubber mallets because that won't do shit. Get you a pair of welding gloves. And you kind of have to get in a hurry, you'll lose your heat fast. So get your oven open, get your cam gear out, line it up with your keyway, and just beat it on there and it'll go on pretty easy. It won't be too bad. But it'll be hot. I mean, it's a hot tamale. You can hear it sizzling on your welding gloves. There's a tape at the end of the shaft, so, or the, the gear, so make sure you're going on the right way. See that time just slid on there. Easy as that. Then hurt to make sure it's all the way bottom out. Now I just let it cool down and uh, naturally cool down and it should be fine. It'll, uh, oh, it'll take a good hour or so for it to cool down. And uh, if you got oil in the gear, it'll boil and smoke the place up like it did here. But man, that's some bitch is hot. Okay, burn the shop down. Whatever you do, don't take water and quench this. Don't do that. You'll crack your gear. So just let her cool down naturally, and you should be fine. After we're putting the 7.3 back together, um, here's the TSO on the service manual. First put your piston cooling nozzles in, so those are torqued in 98 inch pounds. I would recommend getting some blue Loctite, putting on the threads. You don't want one of those coming loose or you'll stick a piston. Next step. I've already got those in. Install the upper halves of the main bearings and the bearing bores. Coat the main bearings halves. I just put lubricant plate assembly lube on them. So, so here's the back of the motor. You can see I've got my assembly lube inside my cam bearings, new cam bearings that we've got in there. You want to make sure you. Okay, here's your. See your bearing tang. There's the slot and the bore. Because you want these, your upper bearings, or actually these are your upper bearings, because I'm the engine's upside down, but the lower bearings have no oil feed hole. Here's your oil feed hole. Number five, number five, number five is going to be your thrust bearing. Most engines, like Cummins, they use the thrust bearing in the middle most of the time, but these power strokes, number five, is your uh, is your thrust bearing. And we'll go ahead and get the rest of our bearings. Just roll them in. Sometimes you gotta mess with them and get them in there. Just make sure they're just nice and centered in there. Number five is going to be your only different bearing. The rest of them are all the same. I'm missing one bearing shell. Here it is. See, here's your lower bearings. Lower bearings have no oil feed hole. 
you'll put those in your bearing caps. Verify that all your oil holes are showing. And then luber plate. Okay, we're going to shove our crank in there now. I got to take some compressed air and blow my crank shaft off. Oops. It doesn't hurt to take some assembly lube and lube up your main bearing, bearing journals either at all. You don't want problems when when you're cranking on it and when it first starts and there's no there's no oil pressure. But most of the time, to be honest with you, on these power strokes, it takes so long to get the high pressure oil system primed. That you usually don't have any problems. Usually the whole engine's got oil by the time it finally starts. Just leave your main bearing journals up real good with this assembly loop all the way around it. And then what I do, I've got a trap and I'm going to use a serpentine belt to pick it up. It's fairly heavy. It's nothing like a truck crankshaft. Truck crankshaft, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be grabbing a, uh, I'd be grabbing my uh, crane, most definitely. And what I do is just wrap it around the rod journal. Try to get kind of centered on it. Don't drop it. It's pretty heavy. You want you to kind of sit there and rest it on that. Okay, another thing I forgot to mention, I should have lubed those up real good, but I'll score some motor oil down in there. Lube the thrust bearing up real good around it. What I'm going to do is lube up the crank, that way it'll carry the, the lube around it. everything you can turn that crank with it in there but be careful it'll try to roll your bearings out
No, man. Driver. There we go. Bearing partially rolled out on me. All right. Now we'll get our main bearing caps. You guys look at that. Everything's in there. So now I'll get my main bearing caps all set up and and uh, we'll get them on there and get those torqued. So let me get those set up and I'll be uh, back in a minute. I'm going to put our lower main bearing caps on and torque them and we'll show you the torque sequence and all that uh, once you look for there. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this. Every one of your bearing caps are numbered and one, and there's an arrow on it. The arrow goes towards the front of the block. What'll happen is your bearing tang here, this little square notch, that's your bearing tang. That'll be on the same side as your other bearing tang. So, arrow goes towards the front and they're numbered, one through five. So one's at the front of the engine, five's at the back. There are two short bolts and two long bolts. You try getting them all the way seated, you know, get your get your uh, bolt started. And if you if you had a crankshaft problem, you really want to go. Uh, that's a whole different subject. You really want to start going over and mic and everything. If you got a crank that has to be ground. You're going to have to use. Uh, different bearings there to take up the slack because your crank journals are smaller so usually you use oversized bearings that are thicker so um, this one here we didn't have any crank problems it looked great so we're, everything's got standard bearings in it but when you're torquing these back down a good rule of thumb is, is every time you torque the cap down see if the crank will turn that way you know if you've got any problems touch with an impact if you want and run them down, but don't cinch them down with an impact. Unless you like doing a whole lot of work for nothing. And on this one here, number five, there's the upper and lower thrust bearing. And lubricate this thrust surface with luber plate real good too.
Okay, so what you're going to do, the tightening sequence, first step is 76 foot-pounds, 15 millimeter, six-point socket, use a six-point socket, go to 76 foot-pounds, okay, one, two, and start, in the, or actually, I'm wrong on that, it's, it's exactly opposite to what you would think, here's the torque sequence right here, it's, they want to do the outside ones first, which is kind of weird, I think they do the inside ones first, like on a cylinder head, but uh, so you go one, two, three, four, start in the middle of the crank, and then you can go to either side, I mean, whatever your preference is, and then same thing, you know. Uh, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and, and you get it, so start uh, torquing this thing down. Okay, so we start out 76 foot-pounds. I like to just run my bearings down to the bearings, get seated up. Okay, let's see if it'll turn. I just got a bolt in at the crank. Okay. So we'll go to the next one over. Remember on your outside ones. And your outside ones is the one you want to do first. I'm going to go on the next one on the other side. Of the center one. And I have to brace the... Brace the engine stand with my... Or my, the block of my leg is the thing wants to take off rolling on you. I'd recommend you spending the money and getting you a pretty decent fork wrench. And don't get me wrong, I use some Harbor Freight stuff. You usually get sewn in the service truck, and then I'm not too worried about losing it. But when you're doing stuff like this, it's pretty critical that you, you're pretty well dead on. This is a snap-on split beam torque wrench. I like these split beam ones because you don't have to recalibrate them as much as the old spring type. And I don't buy the digital ones because I'm always in a service truck and they just get the hell beat out of them and those digital ones won't hold up in the service truck. Okay, so we've done those. Now, 
Last one, number five. Let me make sure it turns. I almost broke my own roll. Oh yeah, that thing feels really nice. It's been nice and free. That's what you want. But if you get any, you know, crank problems, um, I had a John Deere engine one time and the seat hole on the water pump had plugged up with dirt shit. So instead of the water leaking out externally, it was a gear driven water pump. The water blew the seal out on the inside and it went back into the pan. And it eventually came over the top of the piston because they didn't know it was leaking. And it hydraulic the motor. So it, I'm trying to remember, it bent a rod really bad. We put another rod. We, we basically were going to put another rod and we were going to rebuild the motor. We put it back together. The first thing I did was just like this. I put the crank in it. And I I torqued my first bearing down. And the crank would turn. And uh, long story short, that thing had seized so hard that it had stretched the bore in the block. And we had to take the block in and have the whole block line board. And we put oversized main bearings in it. But, you ever get anything like that, you really, really got to check stuff out. Okay, that's the first step. What's the second step? How many foot pounds? 96 foot pounds. And same thing. Same sequence. Better make sure it turns out. That's the number five. Oh yeah, that's nice. That is nice. So you don't even need the wrench. You should be able to just turn it by hand. Now we'll go to 96 foot pounds. Which isn't a whole lot more than Seventy-six. If you're ever worried that you forgot one, it don't hurt a bit to check them all. Check them all two or three times. Okay. Got the crank in her. That's a good deal. That's the pickup tube. Next step is put the cam in. So, we'll line our timing mark up. up really good. Put lubricant plate on every journal, every cam lobe, every every cam journal. It doesn't hurt to put it on everything. Climbing.
I'm going to turn this engine over. I can find my bar that turns my motor over. So we can get our timing marks lined up correctly. over the, the the bearing journals inside the block. It's just kind of tricky. Sometimes you got to kind of twist them. It takes a little patience to get them. Put the, the zero mark on your timing here on the crankshaft. Put it at 12 o'clock. Started. That's a that's a, a beveled gear, tapered gear. It's not a straight cut gear, so that's why I grabbed my mallet and just kind of tapped it in. Okay, and there's two bolts of the thrust plate. I'll have to get the forks on those. guys we uh, got our timing marks lined up cam and crank are installed uh, thrust plate bolts you got to turn the crank a little bit to get to this other one uh, but start this one first and then rotate a little bit just use the bolt that you use to just thread it in don't go real tight with it but it'll be you shouldn't have much trouble turning that one once everything's right but uh, these are 18 foot pounds so that's all we're going to cover this, on this video. Um, uh, tune in for the next video. Uh, the next step is we'll be putting lifters in and our lifter uh, hold down plates. Uh, then connecting rods and pistons and then cylinder heads and all that good stuff. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe.